Okay, perfect. Thank you. So hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today for, for what has been an amazing workshop so far, both yesterday and today, with some amazing speakers. And I would also like to thank the workshop hosts and organizers for a great event so far. So as was mentioned, my name is Gerald Ouellette, and I am Vera's Manager of Energy Innovation. I currently lead Vera's work related to emissions reductions and removals for all our energy and energy transition related initiatives. So specifically, this includes work related to accelerating the hydrogen economy, reducing emissions from resource extraction and development, and most importantly for today, our work related to geologic carbon storage, which includes the topic of the day, carbon capture and storage. So today I'll provide an overview of VERA's globally leading program in the voluntary carbon markets, which is the Verified Carbon Standard, or VCS for short. And I will also provide an overview of our recently released requirements in the VCS program for geologic carbon storage, or GCS projects for short which also includes carbon capture and storage projects. The presentation will be broken into four sections today, with some time at the end for questions. So first off, I'll provide an overview of our organization, which will lead into an overview of the Verified Carbon Standard Program, or VCS, and what this program entails. Then we'll dig a little bit deeper and I will discuss some of the requirements for geologic carbon storage. And lastly, I'll bring this all together to discuss the future within the context of the foundation that the geologic carbon storage requirements have set for new CCS projects within this program. So first off, for those of you not familiar with VERA, given my introduction, you may be asking yourself who we really are and what does VERA do? So VERA is the leading standard setter in the voluntary carbon markets, and we're creating standards for a sustainable future. We accelerate action on climate change and sustainable development through standards that drive investment to achieve measurable, high-integrity outcomes for our global stakeholders. Further, we look to support opportunities globally where we can achieve high emissions reductions and removals that simply might not have otherwise occurred. Our work has an impact all around the world and across a wide range of sectors and activities. Fundamentally, we drive large-scale investment to reduce and remove emissions, reduce plastic waste, improve livelihoods, and protect nature. Further, VERA was established in 2007 to provide increased quality assurance in the voluntary carbon markets. We are a registered nonprofit organization under Section 501c3 in the USA, and we're headquartered in Washington, D.C., with staff working all around the world remotely. So in light of the significant growth in the voluntary carbon markets, VERA has been growing significantly as well to meet this demand. Right now, we're approximately 120 staff, again, working remotely all around the world for the most part. So VERA currently has several different programs, such as the Verified Carbon Standard, our Plastic Waste Reduction Program, the Sustainable Development Verified Impact Standard, or SD VISTA, and our Climate, Community, and Biodiversity Standards. But today, we're going to focus on the Verified Carbon Standard, or the VCS. Again, this is the world's most widely used voluntary greenhouse gas program. Future geologic carbon storage projects, including CCS projects, that might be looking to get credits with VERA would be registering under our VCS program. Fundamental to any project seeking VCUs or verified carbon units in the VCS program is to understand the VCS standard. This is essentially our rulebook for this program. The use of our GHG accounting standards, or what we call methodologies, and our requirements for independent third-party auditing by VVBs. In the subsequent slides, I'll provide further details on these elements. But first, let's talk a little bit more about this program, the VCS. So what does it really mean to be world-leading? Well, for almost every year since 2012, 
The VCS program has been ranked by Environmental Finance as the best greenhouse gas crediting program globally. In early November last year, we surpassed our 1 billionth verified carbon unit issuance. It is important to note that each VCU or verified carbon unit represents a removal or reduction of one ton of CO2 equivalent. So this 1 billion ton mark or VCUs represents over 1,900 projects registered in the VCS program. And those 1,900 projects span across 88 countries. So I'd like to just pause for a second and think about that. And I might even repeat it. So over 1,900 projects across 88 countries. 88 countries. Well, I can certainly say I haven't been to 88 countries. So I really want to highlight that because we are truly um, our program truly applies globally with projects all around the world. So how does this all work to have a project registered in the VCS for potential credit issuance? Well, first off, as I previously mentioned, and in the middle of the circle on the right, we have the VCS standard. This is our, this is our document or our rules and requirements, which all projects must follow in order to be registered and potentially issued credits for reductions or removal activities. Next, we have independent auditing. So all VCS projects are subject to desk and field audits by independent qualified third parties or VVBs to ensure that our standards are met and that methodologies for projects are applied properly. It is important to note that this independent audit by the VVB is in addition to the review that is completed on every single project by staff at Vera. On the left hand side of the slide, we have an example of an accounting methodology. Greenhouse gas emissions, reductions and removals achieved by a project are quantified using a methodology that is specific to that project type. So if a project wants to register, they have to select the methodology for their work, which will detail all of their quantification requirements. So it'll establish how project boundaries are set and baselines, how additionality is assessed and provide technical guidance and instructions to quantify the emissions that are reduced or removed. BCS projects can use methodologies developed at Vera also or under the VCS, as well as those developed by the United Nations Clean Development Mechanism or CDM, as well as those by the Climate Action Reserve or CAR. If an existing methodology does not work for a new project, project developers can develop their own methodology or revise an existing methodology to work for their project. And lastly, the VCS registry is the central storehouse of data on all registered projects. So our registry tracks the generation, retirement, and cancellation of all VCUs. And I'd like to note that this is public. So anyone can go onto our registry. They can take a look and find the projects that exist and that we've issued credits for and where those projects are located and what those project activities involve or are doing. So if both Vera and our stakeholders are looking to accelerate emissions reductions and removals globally, we have to ensure a high integrity bar is maintained with key elements required for what I like to call a good carbon credit. So starting in the top right, on the last slide, I previously mentioned the need for independent verification. So again, a third party that's independent and reviewing and approving a project. Then, in providing a high-level overview of our registry, I'd like to highlight two points here on the far right, that this registry system ensures that projects are transparency, transparently listed, and as well, that there's a unique credit issuance. Then if we shift over to the technical side, the methodology ensures conservative estimates of the project's emissions, reductions, and removals. The project must be additional, and therefore, it would not have occurred otherwise in the absence of carbon credits or carbon finance. If credits are to be issues, issued for an activity, we want to ensure that the emissions reductions and removals are permanent. And lastly, the ERRs have to be measurable and real. That is to say, at the end of the day, the project activity actually occurred. 
So now, this has been the first part of my presentation, where I've provided everyone with an overview of Vera and our VCS program, where future CCS projects that might be looking to get credits would be registering under. But now, let's dig a little bit deeper and talk about bringing in the geologic storage or CCS projects and the requirements at Vera that have recently been been put forward and published. So last year, we added a new sectoral scope under the VCS. This sectoral scope is for carbon capture and storage, and more specifically, sectoral scope 16. This is a new accreditation scope that the independent third parties or VVBs that I mentioned can get qualified for to provide assurance on CCS projects looking to register under the verified carbon standard. A few VVBs have this qualification already. And then in December of 2022, we released key program level updates, which included an expanded scope in the VCS program. And if you had to guess, and you probably already have, that expanded scope was for geologic carbon storage projects, or GCS projects for short. GCS is an umbrella term used by Vera under the VCS to encapsulate carbon capture and storage, or CCS projects, carbon capture and utilization and storage projects, or CCUS, and geologic carbon mineralization, or GCM projects. It's important to note that before these recent program updates from December, registering these types of projects at Vera was simply not possible. On the, on the right-hand side of this slide, you'll see four different yellow boxes, and these represent program documents, both new and existing, that we've put forward with geologic carbon storage requirements. We have updated the VCS standard and our program definitions to accommodate this new project activity. So previously, under the VC VCS, um, things like sequestration or storage zone simply weren't terms that were used for projects. In addition, we've released separate standalone documents for geologic carbon storage with key requirements set forward. Along with that document, we've released a GCS-specific non-permanence risk tool. So I'll go into greater detail about these requirements in the subsequent, subsequent slides. But before we dive into a few too many details on our GCS requirements, let's think about benefits beyond emissions reductions and removals with a CCS project. So we're taking a lens to what other benefits a project activity, such as carbon capture and storage, can bring forward. More specifically, if we look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, we can think about SDG, SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy. Another example would be SG, SDG 8, so Decent Work and Economic Growth, as well as 9 for Industry Innovation and Infrastructure, and then 15, life on land, so betterment to life on land. So I'd just like to note that these are just some of the added benefits that we're thinking about when we look to register CCS projects. Now, this is just a high-level scan and would not be an all-encompassing list that I have mentioned here today. But at the end of the day, it would depend on every single CCS project to consider all the diverse benefits that it might have. Now, as I mentioned, let's take a little bit of a deeper dive on our geologic carbon storage requirements. So the current requirements focus on carbon capture and storage projects. We are anticipating future updates and requirements to be released for CCUS projects and GCM projects. The requirements provide details for project and pore space ownership, as well as site characterization requirements. They also provide requirements for technical construction design requirements and well operating requirements. Along with that, we put forward requirements for storage site monitoring and closure requirements. Acknowledging the lifespan of CCS projects, we've put forward an extended crediting period for a maximum of up to 42 years for CCS projects. Now, this is significantly longer compared to typical VCS projects, which would reach a, ma a max of 21 years. And lastly, understanding the development design 
that some CCS projects might have, and in an effort to support the growth of CCS, we're enabling projects to expand under the VCS program. What that really is doing is creating the framework for CCUS hubs or CCS hubs to be potentially eligible for registration of carbon credits with Vera. Now, I mentioned the release of a GCS specific non permanent risk tool, or short, um, NPRT for short. So, an NPRT is Vera's tool under the VCS that we use to determine buffer pool contributions. That is to say, what percentage of the credits from a project are put aside as a safety net? Project risks are evaluated in five distinct categories under this new tool. Regulatory framework risk, political risk, land and resource tenure risk, closure financial, financial risk, and design risk. So to break that down a little bit more, let's start with regulatory framework risk. This would provide a scoring that ties to the regulatory framework for CCS in that jurisdiction. So it would consider things like poor space tenure and long-term liability. Secondly, if we look at political risk, this would be based off the World Bank's governance indicators. So what does it look like to operate in that area and are there political risks? And projects would be given a score in each of these categories that fundamentally impacts their end score or how much they would be contributing to the GCS um, buffer pool. So now, even if we look at land and tenure risk, another category, this would tie to giving a different score based on if ownership is private or public in the subsurface. And we would also be looking at things like whether or not a company or a project developer can access the subsurface for things like monitoring. Next, if we look at closure financial risk, we'd be looking at providing a different score based on the type of funding that a project has available or has secured for longer term site care costs. And lastly, design risk relates to the technical criteria. We will look at design risk in greater detail on the next slide as an example. And before moving off this slide, the last thing I'll say is that we have these five distinct categories that I've mentioned. And at the end, these are combined to get a final score for the project's contribution to the buffer pool. So here's an example of design, the design risk category or table five in that document. <clears throat> so it's based off three different elements. First, what, whether or not the well design meets the technical requirements for things like setting casing, um, which we've detailed in this document in an appendix. Then a different score might result depending on the number of confining layers that the target storage zone has. And lastly, we want to be thinking about the history of the storage reservoir and whether or not historical data is available. So does the reservoir have existing well penetrations for one? And do we have access to relevant data to confirm if those prior wells have been properly abandoned? So I just wanted to highlight this as one example of the analysis that would be done to determine a project's buffer pool contribution. And as I mentioned, there's five distinct categories um, for any project seeking to register in the VCS program. And each project must score their respective project according to their, this document. So now I've covered a few different things today, but let's bring this all together. At Vera, we're setting the foundation for the future, and more specifically, a future for CCS projects to be registered in the VCS program, which is the world's leading carbon standard. GCS projects are a new project type that is eligible in the VCS program, with key program requirements recently published. And let's not forget, this is just the start. Currently, our requirements focus just on carbon capture and storage, but there's more to come as it relates to CCUS and GCM projects. With a program level foundation set for CCS projects, next is the forthcoming CCS methodology, which we are anticipating starting public consultation on soon. The CCS Plus initiative is developing this methodology with Vera as the selected standard setter for this work. Everyone will hear more about this work in the next presentation from the CCS Plus initiative. And lastly, to everyone here today, 
We are in this together, and we are at the forefront of accelerating emissions reductions and enabling the generation of GHG removals globally. Thank you to everyone for listening in today. I would encourage you to visit our website to review these GCS requirements, which I've provided an overview of today. And please feel free to reach out to me directly should you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gerald. Uh, thank you for your very clear explanation of BCS requirements and PRT and importance of project sustainability impact. Um, I also appreciate your hard work and dedication to realize generating carbon credits from CCS activities. Um, I think your work has huge impact on CCS deployment all over the world. Um, well, now I would like to ask you one question here. Um, a public carbon market is being considered in ASEAN. What is the current status of Bella's efforts in the region? Um, I'm not sure if I heard the entire question. Okay, um, I'm repeating. Okay. The last part. Okay, um, a public carbon market is being considered in ASEAN. What's the current status of Bella in the region? Yeah, so specific to CCS, um, right now we're, we're expecting the methodology to be going uh, public soon. And once that um, occurs, then essentially uh, projects all around the world in any location, if they meet our requirements that I've uh, discussed here today, um, could be looking to potentially register a project uh, with us. Thank you very much. It's, uh, I think you uh, answered the question very clearly. Okay, thanks, Gerald. Thank you. Okay.